It should be no secret to absolutely any human being on this planet that Sega hasn't handled the Sonic the Hedgehog franchise all that well. Whether it be rushing out games to meet deadlines, making strange financial decisions, and just generally not caring about Sonic's potential as an entire franchise. Yeah, Sega, they ain't the best of companies, let's just say that. If Sega was my father and they treat me the way they treat Sonic, I can't lie bro, I'd be disowning them as a father, not them disowning me, but me disowning them. But, with the recent success of Sonic Frontiers, it seems that Sega may have had a change of heart. Because in today's video, we have an interview from Famitsu with the director of Sonic Frontiers, Morio Kishimoto, and producer of Sonic Frontiers, Sachiko Kawamura. And it actually reveals some interesting info about the way Sega is handling Sonic now. So, without any further ado, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, let's take a look at the interview at hand. On to Famitsu, we Sonic Rush. Actually, hang on, hang on, just before we carry on with the video. Something tells me that you're not subscribed. How do I know that, you ask? Well, look at this. Are you seeing that right now? Most of the people watching this video right now aren't subscribed. What's going on with that then, eh? Press that subscribe button right the hell now because, you know, just saying, Sega was telling me that if you don't subscribe right now, they ain't releasing that Unleashed port. Okay, they didn't actually say that, but, uh, Come on man, you should still subscribe right now. You won't regret it. Trust me. Anyways, I'll stop bothering you now, so uh, on with the video. Right, because this is a very long interview, I'm not going to read the entire thing, just the most important parts of it, so just be aware of that. And also, another thing, the original interview was obviously in Japanese, and because me and you probably don't speak Japanese, we're going to be using a translation from Google Translate, and obviously that's not going to be 100% accurate, so just be aware of that. But here's the headline of the interview, it sold, obviously it referring to Sonic Frontiers, a total of 3.5 million copies worldwide, and sold more than three times as many domestically as its predecessor, obviously that being Sonic Forces. But I can go further. First anniversary interview, looking back at the New Horizons pioneered by Sonic Frontiers. Then in this section of the interview right here, this is where the juicy stuff is. So, approximately one year of free updates has been completed. What was the schedule for the three updates that took place over a period of about a year? Morio Kishimoto. As I mentioned earlier, the 2.5 million units sold within four weeks of release is the fastest record in the Sonic series. Seeing the momentum, we decided to make updates at the discretion of producer Kawamura and upper management. We had plans for updates before the game's release, but we originally envisioned it as a compact version of seasonal updates, such as Halloween. I think it's thanks to everyone's support that we were able to make aggressive updates that greatly evolved the game and enriched the gameplay. So essentially, the original idea for these updates for Sonic Frontiers from Kishimoto's perspective was to make more things like the Holiday Cheer DLC and I assume the Birthday Bash update. I don't think they were really planning on adding any like major features to the game, so I think it's because of people on Twitter telling Kishimoto to add stuff into the game. That's the reason stuff like the sliders in Update 2 and the Spin Dash were even added in the first place, so uh... Yeah, I guess that's thanks to us, sort of, I guess. Hmm, I guess we finally found a good use for Twitter. Well done, guys, we did it. Well done. The numbers were good, and the feedback from people who played it was also a boost. Kishimoto, yes, Kawamura. The biggest hurdle for this work was whether the new title, Sonic Frontier, would be accepted by the fans, but the fact that it was accepted was a huge success. Also, since Sega values the relationship of trust with the fan community, the company is also recommending updates to strengthen the relationship with fans. However, I think it was a pretty big decision that they allowed us to do a free update of this scale. So what you're telling me is that the same company who tried to make us pay for Soup Sonic back in 2017 decided to have the idea of putting out a free update for Sonic Frontiers of this huge scale. My, how times have changed. Wow. Sega legit could have just said to Sonic Team, you know what, Frontiers is done now, let's go on to the next game now, on to the next game. Or they even could have said, oh, this massive update that you're doing, you know what, charge £10 or whatever for it. Charge that, it's alright, they'll pay for it. But no, they didn't do any of that, they decided to just make it free and not abandon the game. God damn. I'm impressed. I am actually impressed. Rather than just saying, oh yeah, we'll change now guys, we'll spend more time in the games or whatever, they actually instead actually did something to actually show that they actually mean those words now, which is a lot different than a couple years ago. Because before when Sega was saying that, they were putting out games like Team Sonic Racing and Colors Ultimate, but now, okay, they've actually done what they said they're gonna do, and you know what? That's fair enough. I can't hate. That, that is genuinely respectable. Like, even if they did charge for this update 3 DLC, I would have paid it. Like, I thought that update would have been worth paying for, but 
No! Hmm. Wow, I'm actually just baffled by this, wow. I mean, even though technically it was kind of Sega's fault in the first place, because remember that story of Yuzuka having to beg Sega for one more year of development on Sonic Frontiers, and he just barely got it, so... In a way, it is kind of Sega's fault, but... They're correcting the mistakes now, which is something that hasn't been done in the past, so again... You know what, yeah, I can't, hey, let's just carry on, shall we? When I actually played the game, I was surprised to find out that this was a free update and not paid DLC. Exactly, that's what I'm saying. Does the fact that such big updates were made on a regular basis mean that the company was thinking about valuing the support of fans and the fan community? Kawamura, that's right. I believe that in the future, games should not just be sold, but should instead build relationships of trust by responding to the voices of fans. The game industry has changed a lot since it became possible to download and patch games. Home video game titles are also becoming more like managed titles. And looking at this situation, we have to think about how much we can appeal to, or provide services to, Sonic. Since it has such a large fan community, the place is also very important. See, I clearly they care a lot more about the fans now. They always did care about them, let's not get it twisted here, but... Right here, as we can see, yeah, I think they care a lot more about the fans now. Whether it's because they actually respect us, or because they know that if they do something stupid, they will call them out for it and it'll look bad on them. I don't know, but hey, if it means we're getting stuff like the Final Horizon DLC, go ahead, I don't really care. Recently, new Sonic games are being released at a rate of about one per year. Does that also have the meaning of retention in the community that I mentioned earlier? Kawamura. In the past few years, live-action movies have been released, and there is a lot more momentum as a company to focus on the Sonic IP than before. It's easy to see if you look at the Sega booths at last year's and this year's Tokyo Game Shows, but we put a lot of effort into Sonic. In this vein, the company's intention is to expand the number and lineup of titles to further increase excitement. And yeah, all that is actually very believable, it makes a lot of sense actually. Ever since the movies dropped, we've been getting a lot more Sonic games like very frequently, probably because they were doing so well and obviously garnered a lot more attention to Sonic as I said right here. Before the movies, Sonic was in a really good place to be honest. We just come out of the boom era, we just had forces, Shaw Mania was great, but it sell amazingly, and yeah, just overall, Sonic is probably at the lowest point it's ever been in the history of Sonic, probably. Okay, that might be a bit of an exaggeration, but definitely one of the lowest points ever. Sonic was just not popular, nobody really cared about him, and with stuff like the IGN interview saying that Sonic was never good, I'm sure that really nailed in the point that Nobody cares about Sonic anymore, really. At least that's what Sega thought. Now, what I imagine actually happened here, so to paint the timeline out right here, 2017 rolls around, Sega and just went bankrupt off the previous era of Sonic Boom and all the stuff they did there. Idiots, absolute idiots they were during that time. But yeah, 2017. Alright, we just nearly went bankrupt, guys, so let's just chuck a couple of cheap Sonic games together. You know, chuck Forces together, Mania, cheap games, let's just chuck them out there to the world. Does it make a bit of dollar back? Then, ooh, Mania? Okay, that game was actually pretty good. You know, Forces? Uh, yeah, it was Forces. Oh, come on, guys, we don't care about that. Charge of a Super Sonic, we need to get, like, something out of that game, right? But Mania, you know, it's actually doing pretty well. You know what? Get Mania Plus in development. Bring the guys back, you know, 2018. Bam, Mania Plus, £5 or whatever. Charge them for that. Then 2019 rolls around. Okay, guys, I think we should probably put another Sonic game out. You know, this time... A spin-off, we got a team working on another game already right now, but yeah, spin-off Team Sonic Racing, put it out there. But again, nobody's probably going to buy this game, right? I mean, it's Sonic, nobody cares about it, so... Cheap game, boom, no budget or anything like that, just put it out there, go ahead. But then here we have the turning point, 2020 with the movies. Okay, the, the movie is actually doing pretty well, we didn't expect this at all, I mean, with all 2019 design, God forbid that actually nearly happened, my God, but... You know, that looked horrible, but no, with the new design, people actually like the movie, and it's the number one video game movie nearly of all time. Okay, we did some, maybe people care about Sonic, you know what? I think it's time, let's get some more games to put together. Now, obviously, in 2020, Sonic Calls Ultimate was actually supposed to come out, but yeah, we know how that game was about to turn out, so you know what? Delay that game, we can't have a fairly like Sonic Boom Razor, really. just put that game out on the year, put it in 2021, you know what? Let's do that, do that. We gotta at least have a new game out before Frontiers comes out, probably next year, right? Probably? Because these new fans of the movie, we gotta keep them interested, so put a new game, Close Ultimate, bam. Then, yeah, we know what happened with Close Ultimate, so, you know, no need to talk about that, but, you know, classic Sonic Mania, 
That did pretty well, didn't it? You know what? Let's put on another low budget game. Um, a classic collection of the old games I put out already a million times. But you know, this time we'll remaster them, eh? You know those widescreen Christian Whitehead ports? Put them in the collection, get like a Sonic 3 widescreen from somewhere, get head cannon to make it or something, and boom. There's another easy Sonic game. Wahoo. Oh, but what's this? Izuka's complained that Frontiers isn't ready yet, but... Bro, we, we need the game out here, man. Come on. But okay. Izuka, we really don't want to do this, but we'll give you the extra year for Frontiers. We don't want another catastrophic fail like Boom Razzlebrick, but you can't have that happen again, so... Boom, push it another year, but... Yeah, we got Movie 2 coming next year too. You know what, this is fine, this is fine. The Boom 2022, Movie 2 comes out, big success again. Boom, we've done it again, boys. Alright then, let's get Origins out, I think. We made the same mistake last time where we didn't have a game out for the Movie 1, but you know, Movie 2, we'll have Origins right out. I know it's not done right, but, um... The game's the game, right? Really, it is, so push out, bosh. And then later down the line with 2022 Frontiers. Okay, push the game out. Oh, it's actually a big success. You know what? We'll actually go for a, a bit of a nice thing from the bottom of our hearts right now. Give it a free update. Keep it going. We need more money from this game because it's actually doing pretty well. And um, yeah, here we are right now. We don't care about Sonic Superstars, but that game existed, we don't care about that. But yeah, that was kind of a, probably a crap timeline or whatever, but that's what I assume happened. That's kind of like a little summary right there. So then. What does this mean for the future of Sonic? What's going down there? What is Sega thinking right now? So, what I assume is going to happen is, yeah, more games coming out every single year now. I mean, there was in that leaked document or whatever that there's a game coming out next year in 2024. I know some people are buying that document because, you know, oh, it's fake or whatever, but I've got a bit of faith in it. So I assume this will be another game next year, whether it be a paw or a spin-off or something. But yeah, Movie City coming out next year. They're going to want a game to come out alongside it, obviously. Makes sense. And yeah, in terms of the next Sonic game, Sonic Frontiers 2, whatever they call it, I reckon that game is going to be, like, very high budget. Sega have finally seen that Sonic actually means something now. When they put budget and hard work into a game, it results in big numbers. So, I assume Frontiers 2, that's also going to be a very good game. I assume so. I'm hoping so. Like, I don't see how they're going to fumble the bag this time. I mean, they've seen Frontiers 1 sell well. They've got a base already for Frontiers already, so they just use that. The vision is all there. All Sega gotta do now is just act upon it. Just act upon the vision and boom, vision equals money. Well done, Sega. You've done what a company's supposed to do, make money. Anyways, yeah, that about does it for today's video. So, yes, yeah, Sega seemingly has learned a lesson now when it comes to Sonic games. Hopefully. I'm really assuming here. Sega better not just lose all my hope again. But yeah, this means more games every year now because Sega sees Sonic as actually worth something now. And yeah, in terms of the game quality, I know we just got Super Sass and all that, but I assume the game quality will continue rising at least for the mainline series. In terms of the spin-offs, I don't know what they plan to do with that. But what do you guys think of this news? Do you have a lot more faith in the future of Sonic because of what Sega has actually said here? Let me know down below. I'd love to see what you guys have to say. I hope you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, share, subscribe, especially the last one. Don't forget to become unleashed, push that join button down below. Remember, it's not necessary. And I'll see you all next time. Peace!